<laughs> and here we are. I'm continuing our series of uh, conversations with the presenters we have coming up at Music for People's Summer Breeze Music Fest on June 12th. We'll be online this year. Today, I am. I love speaking with David Rudge. He is a uh, one of the faculty members. He helps direct. He's at uh, SUNY Fredonia. Is a phenomenal conductor, improviser, Tai Chi person, <laughs> and uh, and and has been with music for people in various forms for decades. So I'm talking to him. Where he's in his office at SUNY Fredonia. Welcome, David. It's so good to talk to you and see you. Nice to see you too. Yeah. My gosh, we were talking a little bit before uh, before we started recording about how this year has been, mm. uh, how this year has been uh, for people who can improvise or 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 want plans. We were talking about planning, and, and Plan. really, what we have yeah. to do is think about what is what's true now, and that's so much what we do in in improvisation. And I think first we need to make sure we're taught when we're talking improvisation, it's not necessarily jazz improvisation at all. So for you, David, what is, um, you come from classical background, what's improvisation for you and how is it, how has this been for you for all these years? What's it meant to you? Well, we were talking about the idea of improvising in the past year and those people who have made a way of life have had a, an easier time of it and and you know we we see who wrote that poem about the best laid plans of mice and men you know and and this year has been like a that. playing out of that you know and uh and if, if how much stress it is for those who have to have a plan you know and so this kind of improvisation is going into making music with no plan I mean, we and we want plans, even within music for people. Can we have something? Can we have, you know, <laughs> one drone and then we'll go on the drone? Or can we have a form, which I'm going to be teaching at this workshop or, you know, or a jazz chart, it, that kind of improvisation or, or, mm -hmm. or you have an intellectual, very complicated, worked out left brain plan, you know, and then you feel more secure. But the idea of music for people going and just play, give your instrument and play a solo based on nothing. Like what can come out of that? And of course, games and plans and charts and stuff are cool. And that's great also, but you know, what you feel in the moment is what kind many times we lost touch with, you know? And so to go back to that. And and we talk in music for people about one quality sound and really starting, you know, we, because in our heads, when we come to our first music, we think, oh my God, I have to be able to do all this. And then really, sorry, we've got an out of tune piano. Thank you, COVID and uh, Zoom latency. But really, you know, we just want to start with. One sound. One sound and see where that goes from there. And that makes the whole, there's, there's how we start with improvisation. But you've got, so you've got two, you're doing two pieces. You want to talk about your different kinds of workshops and we can kind of do little mini demos through this as well. Yeah, I mean, for for years, you know, um, we've we've stuck with that idea of one quality sound and simplicity, and childlike simplicity of of um, putting everything you have into into simple, and then it, this beautiful music comes up, especially if you're with another person or two more people, three more people, and 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 uh, it doesn't take much, and you have a music amazing music, and you're. And so we've looked at harmony and we've looked at, I mean, we've looked at rhythm and we've looked at melody like that, you know, combining grooves and combining sounds. And, and then when you combine sounds, you're getting harmony really, but we've never really gone down that road. We started and then we, oh, this gets complicated. And we start again and David Darling would bring charts to AOI and then we, oh, don't do it. And, and so then we, oh, and, and then harmony. So when I, when I, in the last couple of years, when we put together that we we changed the training program, and I was in, and I've been directing the musicianship program, and and we thought, and I I decided, well, you know what? Let's just look at harmony. Let's just take it's the third building block of things come in threes, and so we you know we want to sort of balance the situation a little bit. How can we do that without getting too far in the in the analytical brain? 
you know, because harmony is so off-putting even for music majors in, in college that they're like, ah, it's too complicated. So can we can we do it? Can we go down that road in a um, way that everybody can go, not just people with degrees in music, you know? And so, um, or people without degrees, but have played a lot of jazz and know what all those symbols mean on a page, you know? So a lot of symbols get written, for instance, on a chord, where if you push your fingers on the keyboard and you play, you skip every other white note and you start up the keyboard. And there you go, that's a very complex chord. Play the whole thing now. That's a very cool jazz chord. And within that chord, the more notes you add, the more it's hard for me, if I play my violin with that, to play a wrong note. If you play it again. Yeah, so it goes together. And so we're playing it really interesting harmony now we can we can start to write down all those notes and put numbers with them so we don't have to do that you know but we can do a little bit of it you know and we can we can start with pentatonic the five notes you know the five black notes but you can put them on the white notes and you can that's so easy and that's universal throughout the planet and we looked at that how every culture has some of that and and in different ways and then it, well, where, what, how does that get into our culture? We don't do, you know, Native American uh, flute, maybe, but oh, blues came from pentatonic music in Africa. Now it's blues. Can we add a few notes? And we we are entering blues through pentatonic. And for people who are like a string player who don't play blues that much, oh, that's possible. And then then you're messing around with just three chords in blues you know and just those three chords we can work that that's enough that's a lifetime people are blues artists that's it you know and and so then and then and then what you were doing is 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 really an adventurous jazz and and there's all kinds of of ways into harmony that aren't traumatic or uh want to pair you pull your hair out you know because it's just too complicated so it's, it's been fascinating to find those and to play around with them. So we're going to play around with some of that. Another way is through bass lines, mm. you know, whether it's a pocket bell cannon or whether it's a walking bass in a jazz, you know, and if you just play down bass notes, you go down another octave and you play a little bass. You know, I can't hear everything you're doing, but that's the no, idea. We're, we're, you we're just take going. a repeated pattern down there yeah. and just keep, you know, there's a descending bass line. Yeah, it could be just a yeah. part of a scale or a scale, you know. When I was in, uh, now, you know, those of us who grew up in the 60s, you know, we all learned to play four strong winds, blowing in the wind. We all played the three, demon, you know, the three chords you needed. Mm -hmm. um, we all taught each other around the campfire. And that's how, that's where I learned to sing in harmony. Uh-huh. And just singing the third. And I, and that's always been one of those things I think that I learned in the group also, because I had some music back. So I kind of knew the theory, uh, but, but I, and I, and I did it with my choirs and I did it with my kids in my classroom. We could get that kind of thing. It seems that if we can get people even singing. Yeah. That third above or below have you have you played around with that in your improv group and how have you how has that gone on yeah that's it's great when that happens because if you have i mean i have an improv group at the college and and it's open to both music majors and uh non-music majors and i've always kept it that way even when it got really big you know before the pandemic and we've had 50 people in there and it doesn't matter because um, 
the the non music majors can bring incredibly inventive things from no baggage of being told they're wrong for years, you know, and so, and they're just like, let's try this. And, and the music majors say, what should I play? And all the instruments are on the floor and whatever you want, you know, and, but when we do sing a lot and then uh, we just basically say harmonize and people will start to do what you're saying other people are starting looking for the pitch and, and the, but as the whole group is doing it they find their place you oh, know like, you can do it in group by entrainment i think that's how we yeah are. yeah so right. you have people oh, in you know, churches. Oh. yeah when, when we went to church we were little kids you know and it was like a uh if it's a, like a protestant church and it may if you can read the hymnal you read the hymnal but if you can't read the hymnal people are standing around and they're kind of kind of singing harmony like they figure it out somehow you know and or they don't do they sing a melody you know but but um everybody isn't trained to especially now to read music you know and so but yet they sing what sounds good and that's usually harmony you know and so it it doesn't really need more discussion than that in a way and so the experience of sitting around singing in thirds is it's a beautiful uh consonant thing you know and um yeah, I just love the idea of it doesn't need more explanation than that. I'm kind right. of going to stay with that mantra of, yeah. um, you know, there's a third mantra emerging in music for people. I don't know if you were part of that meeting, but it was an ex it was a, uh, a, a turning point for me. We were having a board meeting and um, Bonnie was there talking about people had written beautiful letters about her father's passing. David Darling and uh, one person wrote a letter and she said it was sort of after the a week later or whatever and she said I'm sure you've heard from everybody and she said I don't have a lot more to say except what David said many times was blah 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 <laughs> and, 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 and somebody said we should make that the third mantra and I'm like yes that's the third mantra you know the first two are, are smiling like we're doing and yeah. taking a breath and just uh, releasing, right? And just uh, releasing, smiling, and then inhale, like uh, surprise, you know, astonishment and hearing music for the first time, like things that we haven't heard before or anything. And so with this idea of getting out of your analytical head of talking and just, and just experiencing thing, things in music, you know? And so, uh, yeah, that's the third one. <laughs> Reminding that. ourselves I, once in a while that. And he would do that particularly when he found himself talking too much and, and it was, or people would ask too much of an intellectual aid, let's just play. And you know, it comes out in the wash, which is, which is really something I think for our educators who are coming into this work, you know, and, and we've been both been in, I've been in elementary and secondary school, your university, there, there's a lot of talking that goes on <laughs> as a conductor, as a teacher, and somehow, you know, teachers feel at some level that we need to explain every single little detail. Like how do you, how do you get over the break on the clarinet? You know, I mean, I'd go around and blow this note hard. I'd flip the key. There, done. Carry on. Let's go. You know, That's the thing. Work. You know, when I, when I, I had taken basic conducting, but then when I really started to get serious about it during my master's and I took a, I started private lessons with a really experienced conductor, a mm -hmm. well-trained guy. And he said, okay, first of all, musicians don't want to be talked to. They want to play. So that's the first rule. So you got to show it. Let's go. And then it was, that's what we took from, you know, and it always came back to that. Like they don't, they're really there to play. Yeah. And it, and if, if you're talking and people are fidgeting around or playing little sounds, that's your cue. Stop. You know, yeah. like they, their hands want to do it, you know? And, um, but so music just, so, sorry, so, so just talk about, like for teachers coming into this. Well, that's the thing. You notice you know? them then being the shock for them or the surprise or the learning or the aha. Because as they're watching this, they're thinking, oh my God, I've never taught improvisation. I've taught blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know? I mean, look, in the, in, go, in the beginning, <gasps> David Darling ran workshops where it was so experiential and so nonstop go that there was no room for discussion. We didn't discuss anything. 
we just did the next thing and the next thing and the next thing pretty soon eight hours had passed you know and then we had another day and then another day and we just kept going and and new ideas were just flying around and okay then years passed and people wanted to talk about it and then they wanted okay a little bit of processing okay but then it became these long tangential discussion and he was like okay that's enough and then like let's go back to playing because people love to do it somehow we feel safe with it but we had just spent many hours being unsafe musically like oh not only really unsafe in a bad way in a good way you know and and so i think the ba work is basically experiential and that is flies in the face of most education which is not and 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 music education sometimes no too so so in other words the things we do in music for people can be taken away as educators so, oh let me try that we don't have to discuss it all the time sometimes we can break it down but other times like how we did went through that you know okay but but sometimes um staying in the right side of the brain for extended periods of time is is life changing. Drumming is an example. If you drum for a few minutes, you're still not quite in the groove. It takes time. Like I did this with my students once. I was we would drum for a while in the very beginning, and it was like they don't really have rhythm yet. They don't have a pulse. And so one class, there was a definite change. I said we're staying with this until they feel that I get that there's rhythm in this room. Forty minutes later. We had rhythm in a room. Yeah. Okay. And then after that, it was less time, you know, but we had this experience as a group in the groove. Nowhere else do they get that because they go to an ensemble rehearsal and pretty soon conductor stops and starts talking. <laughs> in fact, sometimes groups beg conductors, we're getting close to the concert. Can we, can we play through this? You know? And so, um, Basically, that's, I, I want to try to stay with that, especially as musicianship guy, where it's kind of like about the music, right? And, and so, it's ironic that here we're sitting in a conversation, but it, Zoom is this, you know, this plat rather than playing. It's just, Zoom doesn't allow us to do the, quite the same things. Yet we have right. been online now for a year with music for people and it's been successful. Yeah. And yeah. it's been this combination. I want to just go back. I remember um, one of the things that, did work is that Dave with around talking about it was to have a, a quartet would do a play would play something and then there would be all right what did you like what did you hear because yeah. sometimes we need the words to anchor what experience I like that I would have liked this I missed this I would have I, I wish I had done this and then so uh, quickly what did you hear from the outside because the experience in the group is so different from what the people, the audience and people are outside of hearing. So it's always that, you know, until we, both of us do Tai Chi and Qigong. I mean, it's that, can you stand in Mabu? Can you stand in horse stance where there's tension and your legs are solid and the top part of your body is completely flow. It's that yeah. constant. And it's the same with talk and play and yeah. silence yeah. and sound and strength and quiet it's just and balance right it's a balance between playing and, and 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 talking about it and and that kind of talking about it sometimes really imp really important because um you're wondering what's going on here does anybody else feel this way and then you find out yes or or if you're improvising and you're busy doing it you don't know uh what happened there and yeah. then the whole room says that was cool and you say really and yeah. that, that's happened many times where oh, it's gosh, like yeah. you see oh oh there's this wonderful affirmation from speaking about it that occurs you know and uh because it's not really possible to judge this while you're doing it if you're really doing it you know and so a workshop that you're doing so you do one dealing with harmony in improvisation you're also dealing one with form and this is so music for people came from the classical tradition. David was highly classically trained uh, and bring, you know, I remember his talking about articulation and, you know, all those um, classically strong skill-based pieces 
which sometimes we miss if we don't have people in the room that have that classical base. We don't, we forget about some of that thing. So, but he brought in classical forms. Yeah. And so that we do have a, a, a structure we can play in and there's the great power limits. So talk about form and how you're bringing that into these works. I'm bringing it in as a classical player is not in a classical way. So again, it's kind of like, looking at the universal, which is so wonderful about what we do, right? So classical is a part of the universal thing. It codifies things, you know, okay. But basically, like even this uh, conversation we're having, it has got a beginning and a middle and an end. You know, right now we're in the middle and we got a couple parts to the middle. Like I'm doing two of these workshops, one's in harmony, one's in form. After this, we'll probably have a one down, right? <laughs> And, and then, then we'll have, <laughs> so we'll, yeah, and we'll have like A and then B and then A, we call it, right? For one of a better, more imaginative way Oreo of cooking letters, right? Or beginning, middle, end. Or sometimes I use the idea of being home and then going away from home and then coming home. And many times people don't leave the front yard, they don't really go away from home, right? And so we actually start to track this well, okay, that was the next state. Can we go to another country? You know, and so like, and so um, then they take the group with you maybe, you know, and all these like exploring just that A, B, A thing. Um, because if a folk tune, like a folk song, like a children's song, many times they're in that form, but a, a, a 20 minute movement from a Mahler symphony, many times is in that form it's a little harder to track it over 20 minutes and turn it 20 seconds, but you know, um, is there and we feel it. And so I, I start to realize like after years of conducting these masterpieces of form that I, I have a sense in my body of, or, or ears or whatever of when it's happening. And so, so yes, we have stream of consciousness, sort of free improvisation. And then we can also choose to, to, sort of pour that liquid that goes everywhere into into containers, you know, and just experiment with them. And that's one of them. And another one's theme and variations, you know, and you can do it. You can talk about it or you can just do it and communicate without words or and start with a folk song again or something else or um, play with, with little pieces of, little of tune and, you know, yeah. and. Yeah, it can be a riff in jazz, it can be a motive in Beethoven, it can be, you know, whatever, but whatever we call these things, but they're, they're very, uh, they overlap in the different musical traditions, you know, and um, so, yeah, while David was classical, I'm classical, you're, you trained classical, like we, we, it's universal in a way, and, and we've had a lot more talking about it, so it becomes a, uh, labeled you know but but without the label is is wonderful and so so there are two uh we've played around with other things like fugue but that's more of a style of listening and imitating we can play with that too you know so um uh so there are some of the ideas that we'll, we'll explore at the workshop and there are other ones too that we can bring in and um i mean blues is one as well it's it's a couple of chord changes, but it has a form, it's a simple form. So um, yeah, so we're going to dedicate some time to that. And then, so, well, while you're here, David, um, so you're heading up the musicianship program. So we have the we have a musicianship and leadership program, and the leadership the the, it, the the MLP started out as all leadership. We were developing facilitators and group facilitators. Uh, who will go out into schools and, and I go out and do workshops and, and there are any number of us that uh, love being in front of a group and we can facilitate group or um, improvisations. And so at a certain point, I think it was actually when I was in the program, it was in the 90s, right, in the mid 90s, yeah. when we created the musicianship program, because there are people who want to come in and do this, but they have zero interest in going and facilitating groups or they're not, they're not in the classroom and so on. So can you talk just about that piece of the MLP for those who people who might be coming to the program who, want, who are interested in, but 
really just want to develop the musicianship. What does that mean? Yeah, you know, you hear people who come in and they just want to play, you know, and 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 those that first impulse of just wanting to play is the basis of it. And so uh, some of them may be shy about getting in front of a group. Some of them are not shy at all about getting in front of a group, but they just want to work in their musicianship, you know. And so uh, very rarely are we a soloist in life at all about anything so we always interfacing with people so so they overlap you know like a a venn diagram you know there's the the, the players are working with other people and the the educators are, are hopefully playing uh, and music for people is wonderful about that because education ed is playing all the time so um but like can you do a performance and maybe we can talk about how to get the audience involved yeah you know? you're great or, you know, David was always, did you make your CD yet? He's always saying that, right? Make your CD. And so this now this wonderful platform of not just Zoom, but like Soundtrap, and people are making multi-track CDs so easier than ever in the world, uh, in, in history. And, and um, you know, I'm going to be using that with my class in the fall where we're going to have assignments of just uh, 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 contributing yeah. as a collaborator to that kind of thing. That gets a little technological, but just making your recordings um, and 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 giving them to us, but also um, projects like the third year of the program in musicianship, you'd have your own um, personalized kind of curriculum, if you want to call it that. Well, some people might put together something, a poetry and music project yeah. or film. And I know we did have film and photography with, with music improv and and what are some other projects that 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 we have come through well it depends on on your um uh yes those two ones there's dance as well and maybe someone's working with a dance company so we we'll want to see what they're doing you know and and they want to take it towards that or uh uh well also with audience and like playing with the audience accompanying them and and um there's so much you know uh that we can spoken word is great you know right. and to, to make that into recordings of that with themselves and um so yeah and it, it really depends on what they want to do and so uh it's it's less structured than the other uh than the uh, leadership program and and more experiential for your own experience, you know, and, and a stress about mindfulness, about really paying attention and listening and at a deep level of what what you and, and other people are doing. And so um, it takes time. It's a different kind of time, you know, and uh, so, yeah, there's a certain amount of time in front of a group, but not, but less than leadership. And there's more time playing and making music. Yeah. Awesome. Different ways. Okay. Well, my friends, thank you. David, thank you so much for You're welcome. Being yeah. Being here. This is it's always good to talk to you. And we haven't seen each other. I know. Uh, it's been a couple of years now. Um, so we're looking forward to we're looking at a live possible. We're looking, we're seeing what October looks like for okay. an in-person yeah. event in uh, New York State and, you'll, and those who are watching you'll hear more about that um, but we also have Art of Improvisation which will be online again and that will be coming out soon I guess will be so yeah the end of July beginning end of July all. yeah a few days so and, normally yeah. we would be live for a whole week and the music just keeps on going um, it was but right now we're on zoom so and we we make it work um, and in the meantime, we have Summer Breeze Music Fest on June 12th. Registration is now is open. We have gradated tuition fees. So you can, uh, there's kind of a subsidized or someone else will help uh, support your tuition. There's a full tuition. You can help to pay your tuition and you can support someone else's. And you can also, we have several people who, uh, who provide tuition for someone else. So we like to make these accessible. And yet we still like to pay our faculty a little bit and pay the cover some expenses. So uh, David sessions will be it'll be July. Uh, everybody would there are 17 sessions across three tracks. So we've got education. What is it? Education and performance. So you've got musicianship and and then um, 
What's the third? What's the third track? Uh oh. Uh oh. There are three tracks. Okay. It's early. <laughs> They'll see it in writing. There are 17 yeah. sessions, and we end with a sound bath. And I mean, it's just a whole variety of of, um, of experiences. Um, is it so, an education track, or is it education? Yeah, track? education, creative, and I guess leadership. Yeah. So all kinds of ways you can participate. And uh, so we'll end here. And we will look forward to us. I'll see you on June 12th. It's coming up very hey. quickly. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Blessings. Thanks, Sarah. And we'll okay. talk to you later. Okay, bye.